Good, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the morning worship service at the St. Matthew Missionary Baptist Church at Holloman Drive in College Station, Texas. Amen. We're grateful to God once again for an opportunity to come and gather, assemble ourselves together in this house of worship that we might render unto God. Amen. Do praise. Amen. For he is worthy of all of our praise. So we're thankful unto him for this gift of a new day and all the blessings that he has bestowed upon us uh, up until this very present moment. Amen. Looking forward to the grace and the mercy that will continue to follow us. Amen. All through the rest of this day, if it be the will of God. Amen. So we're thankful uh, unto God for uh, this opportunity to come and we're thankful for our, for our pastor and those that are present here today that, that if we just look around, we can see the goodness of God. Yeah. Amen, amen. We, though we are many and we have all, each have our own story, the reality yeah. is, is it's all, it all comes together in one place. Yeah. And that man, that is our love and our trust and our faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus yeah. Christ. Amen. So we welcome you, amen, into the worship service this morning. We invite in the visitation of the Holy Spirit that we might come and move freely in this place, amen, as we uplift the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. So with that, we will give you over into our music ministry, our choir. They all dressed up this morning, amen, amen. And so, <laughs> amen, we're going to lift up. Zion song, amen, and then we will come back with a scripture and a prayer, and then we will hear a word from the Lord. Amen. 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 amen.
thinking, I was looking out upon the membership here, and it dawned on me that uh, there were multitudes following Jesus. <laughs> Some out of curiosity, but there were those that were seriously interested. And I look out of my the pews this morning and I wonder, I really wonder how many have rejected. And uh, perhaps we don't understand that every Sunday that uh, we're given an opportunity to come to this pulpit to yeah. say what he says to do this, an offering to make a choice between life That's and true. death. And if someone had told you that we were giving away a million dollars of food, parking lot would be full. But all we have to offer you is a choice between life and death. Apparently, that doesn't seem to be worth a whole lot. But we come anyhow, and we stand instead of. This morning, we're going to read from the book of Micah. The seventh chapter. Beginning with the seventh verse, then I'm going to skip over to the 18th and thereon. Therefore, I will look unto the Lord, I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Who is a God like unto thee who Partneth iniquity and passeth by the transgressions of the remnant of his heritage. He's like that, isn't he? It says, transgressions of the remnant of his heritage, he retaineth not his anger forever because he delighted in mercy. Yeah. Surely he had been upset with you for a while, yeah. but his character won't let him hold on to it, yeah. so he'll let it go. Right. He will turn again, he will have compassion upon us. Yeah. And I remember back in the Old Testament, he says, uh, I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion on. Amen. So think it not strange that we look at someone that we think not deserve it, not to have it. Instead, he sees something in us and all of us that is worth keeping. To read from further, he says, can't see when these tears run down, but He will subdue our iniquities, yeah. and thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Mm -hmm. Thou will perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. Amen. Heavenly Father, we are mindful that the day has come and a charge yet remains for all of us, Lord, that we may remember that you said we were created in thine image. And in that, Father, came a responsibility that we would make you known. And to make you known, Lord, we have to get to know you. For you are the word and you are life. And if we would but come to you and believe and have faith, hope, and trust in thee, Lord, we will see the other side. Well, Some of us have a difficult time believing that this book of yours is true and is without error. Yeah. And we must take you at your word and believe that what you say will indeed come to pass. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we're able to do our best to imitate the life of Christ through our suffering and through afflictions. For, Lord, when we look at our afflictions, they are but for a little while down here because time has no comparison to eternity. 
So we're mindful, Heavenly Father, to put our hope, faith, and trust in thee and thee alone. We ask you now, Father, to search us, Master, what each and every one of us, Father. Be there any wicked way, any anxiety, anything in us, Lord, that will cause us not to hear what you have to say to us today. We ask you to remove it right now. Give us a listening ear and a well of reception in our hearts that we may receive what you have for us, Master. That it may take root and in time, Lord, it will produce the fruit that you've ordained for it to produce in us, Lord, that we may demonstrate to the world that we are yours and yours only. We thank you, Lord, for another day. We thank you for this opportunity to come before you now, Master, that you would now manifest yourself in this place. And all would know that thou art God and there's none like you who can come upon your people to, that they might lift up and give you glory and give you praise today. Now, Lord, we want to thank you for the leadership in this place. Thank you, Father, for the example that except for the world is always watching it. Every time that we get together, I know Satan doesn't like it. He caused many of us, oh, Heavenly Father, to fall back and not want to come out and fellowship and worship. But, Lord, we're here today with the voices that we have. We lift you up and give you praise, glory and honor. For, Lord, we remember the example that Jesus said. Everything that he did was to glorify his Father. Yeah. And we in our lives, Heavenly Father, ask now that, that nothing come to pass, Heavenly Father, that does not give you glory, praise, or honor. Yeah. So purge us of our self, Master, and allow the Holy Spirit to be filled completely and thoroughly in us that we may produce in and of and through your Heavenly Father praise, glory, and honor. These are all blessings we pray in thy son's name. Amen. 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 Amen.
up this morning, my brothers and sisters, with my mind on Jesus. <laughs> I woke up this morning with my mind on Jesus. Why? Because nobody else can supply what we need and can love us in spite of us like he does. No more dying there. When we go to see the king, no more crying there. When we go to see the king, who knows when? Who knows the day? We don't know the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall appear. We don't know when he's going to call Melvin's name or when he'll call your name. But Scripture said, be ye also ready. It doesn't matter the day as long as you're ready. And when you're ready, death is not a terror. I know people don't understand and they think we take death lightly. We don't. But we know that for the dead in Christ, they will rise. And to be absent from this sometimes pain-wracked existence means to be present with the Lord. When none of those hurtful, wearying things can touch you anymore. This week, this week, our family celebrated the transition of one of our cousins. And I will confess that I've known this brother for over 30 years. And when I saw his birthday and his birthday, don't miss me now. <laughs> He was born in 32, but he didn't look a day over 40. His hair had turned white, but he still had his vigor, his zeal, and his vigor, and his love for God. Only his hair changed. But when the Lord got ready for him, he called him. 90 years old. What a mighty God we serve. Yeah. The Lord called his name, and then the Lord showed us what he can do yeah. if you would just put your trust in him. Amen. 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 I heard somebody say, oh, that the Lord would bless me like that. <laughs> We're a lot younger than him, but we've had our ups and our downs. We've had... Our hard trials and tribulations. We've gone through struggles, loss. Yeah. Amen. Even times when we ourselves felt like we were at the door. Yeah. But God, yeah. if he can show up at the grave four days after you die, yeah. he can show up when you need him to show up. Yeah. Though in our hearts and minds he may be late, yeah. Yeah. grandmother said he's always on time. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank God for this great teaching and singing and something about warming up. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sports teams don't just go out on the floor cold yeah. or on the field cold. Yeah. They have what they call a warm up. Yeah. And we have our warm up yeah. in worshiping him. Singing praises unto his name, reading his holy scripture, praying heartfelt prayers, inviting him to come in and not only be in the service, but to be the service. God is good. I promise you, I don't want to hold you too long this morning. Pray with me if you will. Father in heaven, we come in the name of Jesus asking now that you would simply have your way. We are your people, the sheep of your pastor. We, we're made in your image and we're made, created in your likeness. 
And God, we praise you for looking on us as awful and as covered with the dirt of sin as we were. And you gave your son that he might lie, die on the cross, lie in a grave that should have been mine. Yes. But on the third day, you raised him up as you promised you would with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. And now those of us who hear your word and believe what you say, confess the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and confess that you have raised him from the dead, that we would and we are saved. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name, Amen. let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable unto thee, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In the second letter that Paul writes to his son in ministry, Timothy, in the third chapter, we find these words. I'll read two verses, but we'll touch more and even more in chapter 4. Verse 16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Chapter 4, verse 1 reads, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Verse 2, preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fable. I want to tag this text with a question. From whence come the words that the preacher preaches? Amen. Where does he get it from? How do so many of them every Sunday stand and declare a fresh word from the Lord? Are we that Smart? No, he answers this. He said all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Then he goes into how God loves us and what he blesses us to be able to do and to have. Now, this is a great subject, inspiration. Amen. Inspiration. We use that word sometimes loosely, uh, that we've been inspired to do this, that we've been inspired to do that. But these holy men, the Bible says, of God, they were under the influence of God. Not only did the inspiration come from God, but the words that they wrote yeah. came from God. Amen. God dictated and they put it down on pen and paper. So that even generations and hundreds of years later, we'd be able to grow from what God has to say to us and what God has done for us. Inspiration, inspiration. Uh, there's, there's something about God moving among his people. There's something about the power of God taking over the pulpit, Amen. taking over the choir stand, taking over the deacons when they come to lead us in prayer. Amen. Amen. There's something to be said for God not leaving us to our own devices. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I like what Reverend Carter said. It, it, it makes you wonder sometimes when you hear our confession and then you see our actions. Amen. 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 Uh, but I'm not discouraged about any of this. Why? Because I know that the same God who saved me 
saved them. And though we may not all be at the same place, I mean spiritually wise, where some are weak, some are still babes, some are mature in the word, but we all are saved by the same grace, washed in the same blood. And God will give you, it may take you longer, but you'll find a reason to find your way back into the sanctuary. Amen. 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 I look at these people up here, I look at all those who are serving, and most of us have been attacked by the same thing. Amen. Amen. That's got everybody so upset, everybody couldn't wait to get out again. I mean, we were locked in. We were... We were on lockdown, amen, but then the Lord opened the door, and and, and an answer to the question, a a solution to the problem came forth. Doesn't mean it won't touch you, amen, it doesn't, listen, your life will be touched by pain and sorrow and disappointment and discouragement, but it will not defeat you. (laughs) Somebody ought to say, thank you, Lord. Any, anybody that's been down like I've been down on myself ought to be able to look up and say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. When, I, when I couldn't stand Melvin, you stuck by him. When he didn't act like he wanted to live, you kept him alive. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We've all had days when we know we were out of the will of God. But here's what happens. He says, I'm going to send you a word. I'm going to send you an inspired word. There's something in the study of God's word theologically. Uh, There's a word, uh, plenary, verbal inspiration. Plenary, verbal inspiration. It just means that the Bible is an authoritative statement and that every word of it is the word of God. No, no, it's not man, it's God. And, and, And to us and for us, he speaks week after week, day after day, in order that we might be able to navigate the vicissitudes of our lives. You know what I mean. Sometimes you're up and sometimes you're down. Sometimes you feel like running, and other times you feel like just hiding. Seems like everything is against you and nothing is for you, but God will send you a word. I will never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. Inspiration is that which actually guarantees the revelation of God. Only God can uncover to frail, fragile, falling men who he really is. We could preach all day, but if he doesn't tell us what to say, you'd see us and miss him. Can I get a word? It's exactly what the book said. Two men, Paul Paul was writing uh, in his last epistle to Timothy, and Peter was writing his last epistle. They had some definite things to say about the Bible. Paul says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. He's talking to a preacher. Don't get hung up on yourself. Be careful that you still respect your elders. Don't you think because you're the pastor, you got the right to be petty? Oh, come on, somebody. Doesn't matter if they don't treat you like they like you. As long as you know I love you. You give them the best that I've given you. Can I get a witness? Paul said to Timothy, preach the word. That's what you ought to do, Timothy. I know where you come from. I know where you got your beginning. I know about your mother and your grandmother, Lois and Eunice. I know how they poured into you every day of your life. I know who your father was, but he wasn't on the same wavelength. But just because daddy's not walking like daddy ought to walk don't mean Timothy can't walk like Timothy ought to walk. Oh, come on, somebody. Can I get a witness? Yeah, just because daddy didn't do what daddy should have done, God did it when nobody else would do it. 
So since I've called you to this ministry, you ought to tell everybody every chance you get that it's not me but the God in me. It's not my word, but it's God's word poured in me and pouring out of me. And he does it because he loves you. And because he'll never stop loving you. He said, I will never leave you. Nor will I ever forsake you. Scripture is profitable. Have you ever read the scripture and then felt so guilty? And you know what he says? It, it will instruct you in righteousness, Timothy. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Hallelujah, Jesus. I remember a few days ago, my mind was not on this sanctuary either. Are y'all going to pray with me? Amen. I promised myself that I, when I got old enough to decide, I was not going to church. Because I grew up and I overdosed yeah. on church, yeah. Sunday church, yeah. not Sunday morning church, yeah. Sunday church, yeah. all day church, yeah. Sunday school in the morning, morning worship at 11, yeah. take a little break, get something to eat, Bible training in the late afternoon, evening service when the sun went down. I'm not going, I'm not going to do it. Amen. I, I, I can't do it anymore. And then you go out and you start following after your desires and the things you want to do and touching things you shouldn't touch. Being in the midst of people you shouldn't be around who have no good thing in their heart toward you. And while you're out there, you don't understand that while you're in that place of danger, God's got his arms around you. Oh, can, can I get a witness? You don't understand that there's somebody in there that really could do something to you except God's got you surrounded with his presence. What a mighty God we serve. Amen, amen. So, so the inspiration means that God breathed the words that they wrote. God said it, and if God had had nothing to say, they would have had nothing to write. Yeah. Scripture said they were holy men who were under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, who put down what God said as God desired. All Scripture, not some. We are of the Baptist persuasion. We believe the Bible is right from the beginning of Genesis to the last word in Revelation. Amen. We know that the law had its place and the law never could save anybody, but the law came to show us our ungodly ways. And Jesus came to pay our debt. We were lost in sin, but the Bible says that though we were lost in sin, God sent his son in order to, that he, as a man, born in the flesh, had an earthly mother and a heavenly father. Yeah. And the mother was promised to a man who almost called it off yeah. because she turned up pregnant. Yeah. Oh, can I get a witness? Y'all know how we think. Yeah. Oh, I hear, I hear you, but who? <laughs> who made you pregnant? <laughs> God did it. Yeah. And he did it for you and for me. Yeah. And, and God talked to him so that he wouldn't be discouraged or confused to the point that he would not stay with Mary. Yeah. Sometimes you just need to get a personal word. Y'all yeah. know if we can get so messed up, we just want to throw up both hands. Yeah. Can I get it? You ever been so discouraged you just wanted to quit? But God is always there to encourage us. The word, the inspiration of God breathed these words. And God said through these men, and as he said through Paul in 2 Peter 
Prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God were moved, as it were, they were carried along by the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. They wrote what God showed them. They wrote what God opened up to them and what God spoke to them. They didn't go beyond it and they didn't stop short of it. So in that, we got 66 letters from God, from Genesis to Revelation. Because God is just that kind of God. We see these men were carried, moved. They were not caught up in their ability to be great orators or great writers or publishers or want to be published. I saw something this week, and I need to share it with you, and then I'm going to go ahead and go to my seat. I saw two men who are in the United States of America reckoned by most folk to be great men of God. This is not negative. This is positive that I'm about to say. One of the brothers corrected himself on the issue of God's order. Did it publicly, did it in the pulpit, in the church where he pastors. And all the people that loved him yesterday were killing him on social media before the sun went down. But I'd rather be right with God than to be upheld by men. And I may not have listened to everything he had to say, but I heard him that day. And he corrected what he had not done before. Yeah. And another one came along and I said, Lord, what are you doing? Mm. Another preacher who had been teaching that tithing is of the law. Mm -hmm. And we're not under the law. We're under grace. Yeah. So you don't have to tithe anymore. Yeah. Well, <laughs> God said to them in the book of Malachi, Am I right? You have robbed me. And they said, how, Lord, have we robbed you? And he said, in tithes and offerings. I confess, that's Old Testament. That's, that's in the time of the law. But let me, let me please drop off some information that 400 years before the Lord gave the law to Moses on the mountain, Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I get a win? Yeah. Yes, he did. So it wasn't that God said, you got to pay tithes. No, no, no. It was already there. God did it. He didn't give that to Moses. But he said, my house, oh, Lord, shall be supported by tithes and offerings, not chicken dinner. Not cake sales, mm. but by tithes yeah. and offerings. God is a good God. Yeah. And, it will, and, and the greater blessing is, he said, try me. Try me now herewith and see if I will not open the windows of heaven. Just obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And pour you out a blessing so great that you will not have room to receive. Is there anybody here blessed beyond what you know you could do yourself? I mean, is there anybody here who just looks up sometime and says, God, why are you blessing me like you're blessing me? I haven't always done what you wanted me to do. I haven't always said what you wanted me to say. But why are you blessing me? Because obedience is better than sacrifice. Isn't that right? God will bless you. And then Jesus comes along and some religious group or two are boasting and bragging about what they do as far as God is concerned. And they say, we've done this, and we've done that. We tithe of Anais and Cumin, and we do. We give everything according to how you have blessed us, and we're trying to keep things in the right order. And Jesus said to them, that's good. Uh, I know what you do. But even in your tithing, you're leaving out the weightier matter. What about love? 
What about forgiveness? Yeah. What, what about thanksgiving? Yeah. You can't be so regimented until God can't get in because you can't get in step with sin. Yeah. Oh, y'all miss me, I think. So the Bible teaches us that God, man, this is what, now there was a story told about a girl that saw a man, and uh, she said uh, to this man that uh, somebody had congratulated him, and, and, and the man says, what did he say? And, and he said, he said that you sang heavenly. And the friend asked him a question. Uh, I can't quite get to that. Is that exactly what he said? And like some of us, the truth came out. No, but that's what he meant. <laughs> Is that what God said? No, but that's what. That's why God said, I'm going to put down every word. And you write only what you hear me tell you to write down. We walk by faith and not by sight. Yep. The just shall live by faith. Yeah. It's been discovered over the years that men become more and more impressed with themselves. Yeah. And so somewhere along the way, my brothers and sisters, and you give me five or ten more minutes, I'll sit down. Somewhere along the way, we forgot that church was for worship. When, we, when the church assembles in the house of prayer, it's for worship. And because somehow they thought that if they didn't bring in something better, something bigger, something that would excite the people, that the church would fail. Right. But God says, Jesus said when he asked Peter, who do men say that I am? Asked the disciples and Peter answered, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And, 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 and Jesus said, you didn't get that from man. You didn't get that from a book, but you got that from my Father who is in heaven. He said to Peter, your name is Simon, but I'm going to change your name to Peter. And Peter means Petrus, a small rock. Are y'all going to pray with me? And then he says, upon this rock, I will build my church. You can't build a church on a pebble. You got to have a rock that's strong enough, a rock that's big enough, a rock that's steady enough to be able to be the foundation for the church. And, and, and Jesus is the foundation of the church. And what he was saying to Peter was, not you, Peter, you're a pebble, but I like what you say. You said the right thing, and I believe my father inspired you because no man would have told you that. But don't get beside yourself, Peter. You're not the rock, you're not the pope. You're my preacher. And upon this rock, the the, the confession that you just made about me, thou art the Christ, son of the living God. I'm going to build my church on that. You don't have to bring in your big bands and all your guest preachers to try to impress the people in the pew. Tell them thou can be saved because God sent his son. And it's not a difficult thing to get to. He said, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and confess that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. He didn't add a bunch of auxiliary things to it. He said, if you believe and confess, you will be saved. Hallelujah. I'm one. Somebody wrote a song that said millions didn't make it. But I'm one of the ones who did. So I keep showing up because I'm one of the ones who did. I keep showing up 
because somebody doesn't know what he can do. And if the devil keeps trying to knock me down and God keeps picking you up, somebody is going to understand that you can't do that on your own. You can't heal yourself if you're not the doctor. You can't prescribe your own medicine if you don't know what the medicine is. But if you got Jesus, you can call him and your prescription won't have to be ready two or three days later. The lady said, come on. And Come on in the room. Jesus is my doctor, and he writes out all my prescription, and he gives me all my medicine and my room. Come on, somebody. You may not have blue cross. You may not have a piece of the prudential rock, but if you got Jesus, he'll make it everything all right in your life. He'll raise you up when medicine can't help you. Am I right, Brother Deacon? He'll raise you up when men have said there's something badly wrong and we've got to use our knowledge to fix it. And before you get to the operating table, God has already touched you. And when they look to see and make sure they're doing the right thing, they can't find what was wrong any longer. Because God is a healer. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Sister Peterson, they were ready. They had the scalpel ready. But God had already taken what was wrong out. And he didn't have to cut you to do it. Somebody ought to say, I love the Lord. He heard my cry and he pitied my every groan. The other day, Robert, he met you at the hospital. Now I see you in the sanctuary. Yeah. What a mighty God we serve. Reverend Johnson, I'm, I came to temple and I saw you in the shape that you were in. But look at God. God will make a way that you don't even know about. <laughs> Hallelujah. We were praying for God to take care of our brother, and, 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 and his baby had already sneaked over and taken a test to see if she was compatible with her daddy. Come on, somebody. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Amen. And, and, and finally, they had a conversation, and she said, it's all right. What do you mean it's all right? I got tested. I'm compatible. You can have one of mine. Come on, somebody. You, you can have one of mine. I, I know yours are not working, but you gave me mine. You and mama, it hadn't been for you. I wouldn't be here. You can have one of mine. God, good, look at him. Look at him, how God can do what only... God can do. He said the time will come and they will not endure sound doctrine. They will heap to themselves teachers who have itching ears. And that's why I shouted this week when I saw those two brothers who knew they were going to come under attack. Stand up and tell the truth. He'll help you weather the storm if you just do what's right. Isn't God good? Any man who leads and teaches and preaches the people of God has to be acutely aware and sensitive to the fact that we're not always right. Yeah. <clears throat> and God corrects us also. And when God corrects us, we need to come back and confess it and acknowledge where we went wrong and apologize to the ones we were leading wrong and allow God to fix what we broke. Does anybody here know God will do just that? God will do just that. The words of God are inspired. Not just his thoughts, but the words are inspired. Satan is the father of a lie. 
He really didn't need to be inspired to lie. <laughs> Jesus says in the word of God that God spake all these words. And then he put a comma, and after that he said what God said. Isn't God good? It was God who did the speaking. Rose, Moses wrote what God said. We got to stay with what the Lord is saying. Amen. We can't be so caught up on being popular until we sell out and have no problem with becoming impotent spiritually. God has filled this church many times. Yeah. More than one. And I know folk are uh, they're concerned, they're afraid, but most of the people that you're looking at who are in this sanctuary have been touched by that same thing. Yeah. Yet, they're here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. They're here. They, they got up from COVID, whatever version of it it was, and, and they did what they needed to do to take care of themselves and to take care of others around them before they got it. And... Now, Amen. not sitting at home scared I'm going to get it again. <laughs> Come on, y'all. But no, wait a minute. The Lord brought me, if he could bring me through that, yeah. he can bring me through whatever the devil throws at me and brings my way. I'm going to come back to this choir stand, and I'm going to sing his praises. While I have a voice and have life in my body, I'm going to give him glory. And when those who are committed to doing the will of God, regardless of how it may look as far as danger to themselves, hmm, it's going through this group of folk, but they're right back here again. And they don't want to call it. And they're singing like they mean what they're saying. Might not be John P. Key, but it's sweet to me. Can, can I get a word? May not be John, but it's sweet to me because you love God and, and God strengthens you to do what it is you want to do to his glory. He's an awesome God. So where do we get the words of life? We get them from the one who, who really actually gave us life. He spoke us into existence took dust, made a man. And the pre one of the preachers this week were talking about order. Order, it's something I never heard him say. And he spoke it like God said it. And before the sun went down, he was anathema. Couldn't wait to hear him yesterday. Who does he think he is? No, no, I think you don't understand. He knows who he is. That's why he came back and fixed what he broke. Yeah. <laughs> Is God good? Yeah. It's better to be right with God yeah. than to have the praises of people. Yeah. Amen. 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 They don't understand sometimes because they think we are. They, people do think we, we, we something wrong with us. <laughs> Man, what's wrong with you? You need some, Somebody told me the other day, you need to be somewhere laying down. I was. <laughs> and he raised me up. Amen. And since I'm up, I'm going to praise his holy yeah. name. Yeah. Since I'm up, I'm going to give him the glory for getting me up. Yeah. Not one time, but multiple times, the Lord has raised me up. Yeah. And it's not because he loves me more than he loves you. Yeah. It's simply because it's his will to do what only he can do when it seems all hope is gone. Yeah. Now somebody would look at me and say, you know what? If God did that for him, I believe he'll do it for me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God can bust men's diagnosis, heal men from diseases that men think medicine can't help, the Bible says, the Lord, it is he who healeth all, not some, but all of our diseases. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. One of the preachers that came out of this church just the other day, I was talking to him, 
And he said, Pastor, I got it for the second time. And I said, I, uh, you understand what that is, right? He said, no. I said, the devil don't like you. <laughs> the devil doesn't have any use for you. But the devil can't kill you. Two days later, I talked to him. And he sounded like nothing had ever been wrong with him. And he still got to stay in the house three days beyond this. But he said, Pastor, I feel good. <laughs> the Lord says you have not because you ask not. <laughs> he said, I feel good. He said, that devil is mad. I said, yes, he is. But there's nothing he can do to change what God has done for you. Isn't that good news? Amen. Jesus came in a body of flesh through the body of a young woman who had never been touched by a man. Immaculate was his conception. Yes. If man touches things, usually he saw them. But no man touched her. Yet she bore in her body the salvation of the world. When he was a boy and they were his parents had gone off to take care of the obligation to the government, pay their taxes and do those things that they needed to do. And he went with them. And when they left, I guess they were so glad to be through doing what they had to do and to be going home. They didn't notice until they had gotten a long way down the road that the boy Jesus was missing. Amen. They went back and they found him and he was teaching. Teaching. The teachers. <laughs> and his mother said, why have you dealt with us like this? He said, know ye not that I must be about my father's business? Yeah. I'm going home, but I had to talk to them first. Yeah. <laughs> Is God good? Yes, sir. I, I'm still under your supervision and your custody, yeah. but I had to speak to them first. Because they just came to pay a debt. They didn't know they were coming to get a blessing. Yeah. <laughs> Is God good? Amen. Yes, what a mighty God we serve. He hung, bled, and died on the cross for our sins, paid our sin, that shed his blood. And somebody wrote a song that said, it was the blood Amen. that Jesus shed for me yeah. way back on Calvary. Lord, have mercy. That blood will never lose its power. It's still good for the saving of soul. And now he's seated on the right hand of the Father. And those of us who have put our faith and trust in him, he pleads our case day to day because the devil is still the accuser of the brethren. He points the finger, but God voids the intent. Amen. Somebody ought to say, I'm sure glad watching, God is watching over me. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes when we're walking along, we're really not paying attention. But let me tell you, God always has his eyes on you. God is always watching out for you and for me. And for that, I'm grateful. Yeah. Truly grateful. I'm not 22 anymore, but I'm 69 and feeling fine. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. I got some aches and things going on, but once I get up, sometimes it takes me a minute. But once I get up, I'm all right, Deacon. If I move a little bit, it seems like the pain just subsides. It's not good to just stay still and give in to pains and aches. God is an awesome God. Where do we get the word from? From God. Because we don't see you like God sees you. And so if God has something to say to you, he has to tell us what to tell you. Amen. And I'm glad that 
He's still doing the same thing. Yeah. All right. We're going to have a song and a prayer of benediction. But it sure is good to see you all. Your numbers are growing. As God's blessings keep flowing, they'll keep growing. Amen. Thanks to Brother Darian Elder who is doing double duty this morning. Always with a smile on his face. Our God is awesome. If there's one today, wherever you are, wherever you may be, whether you've joined us via our live stream or whether you're in this sanctuary today, God's got a blessing waiting for you. If you believe on Jesus Christ, you know the best that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved, no matter where you are. church and you don't know where to go, ask somebody around you and they'll direct you to a church where Christ is the center of attraction. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you in Jesus name for this day for the privilege to stand in this place you, and to share with your people that you are the author and finisher of our faith. You have brought us out of the darkness into your marvelous light. And for that we say thank you. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus, the Christ of God, the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Ghost, rest, rule, and abide with us all hence and forever. And the whole church sang together with one voice. Amen. God bless you. Love you. Amen. Go in Christ.